I married my girlfriend of 10 years as I wished, yet on our wedding day, I was stabbed to death, my girlfriend held me, crying her heart out, when I opened my eyes again, I was back at the wedding, this time, I just want to survive, chapter 1, I died, I died at my own wedding, what was meant to be a joyful occasion instantly turned into a tragedy, guests around me panicked, screaming and fleeing in terror, only my parents fought against the crowd, trying to reach me, but they ran right into the culprit, the killer, blinded by rage, slit my parents' throats with a swift motion, their eyes remained fixed on me, filled with unwillingness, as they fell lifeless to the ground, my girlfriend pressed her hands tightly against my chest, desperately trying to stop the bleeding, but it was all in vain, my life was slipping away, the killer, still holding the knife, walked slowly towards me, using all my remaining strength, I pushed my girlfriend away, I faced the killer head on, the knife pierced through my back, coming out of my chest, at that moment, I felt no pain, just an overwhelming numbness, my consciousness began to fade, I clung to the killer, using my last ounce of strength, and with a hoarse voice, I shouted, Susan, run, my girlfriend shook her head, crawling toward me while crying uncontrollably, with a sickening sound, the killer pulled the knife out of my chest, blood splattered everywhere, he turned and walked slowly toward my girlfriend, foolish girl, leave me, run, I screamed in my mind in despair, filled with helplessness, I sank into endless darkness, chapter 2, when I opened my eyes again, everything around me was suddenly bright, I waved my arms frantically, almost instinctively shouting, Susan, run, my voice was filled with terror, suddenly, something popped with a clear sound, Susan's anxious voice echoed beside me, Fran, what's wrong, my vision slowly focused, I saw Susan, in her wedding dress, frowning and sitting on the bed, her eyes were filled with worry as she stared at me, at my feet, confetti was scattered all over the floor, people around us looked at me in confusion, I looked down at my chest, the vibrant red of the celebration ribbons was blinding, piercing my eyes like blood, I pinched myself hard, pain shot through me instantly, the realness of it jolting me, what on earth is going on, wasn't I dead, before I could react, people around us started joking, the groom must be too excited, look at how dazed he is, he can't take his eyes off the beautiful bride, so hopeless, ha ha, their laughter echoed in the air, but my heart sank lower and lower, I steadied myself and looked at Susan, who was blushing with shyness, Susan, is today our wedding, my voice trembled, full of uncertainty and fear, Susan gave me a playful glance, her eyes full of love, Fran, what nonsense are you saying, people around us joined in the fun, you've got it all, men, success in both career and love, Exactly, we've watched your love marathon for 10 years, and now you've finally made it, hurry up and carry the bride away, don't waste any more time, was it really all just a dream? I still felt uneasy inside, I forced a smile, just as I was about to approach Susan on the bed, the bridesmaid, Mary, stood in front of me, she teased, hey, 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 don't be in such a hurry, you haven't found the shoes yet, have you? Right, the wedding shoes. Chapter 3 I trembled as I reached into the photographer's bag and pulled out a high heel. Then, from under the bed, I found the other one. Everyone around me was dumbfounded by my swift and decisive actions. Mary frowned and shouted, Hey, do we have a mole in the bridesmaid's team? How did it get hidden like this, but still found? I was frozen in place. It felt like all the blood in my body had solidified in that instant. Exactly the same. Exactly like my previous life. So next, Susan and I would hold our wedding in the hotel. And then, I would be stabbed to death, this isn't a dream, I can't marry her, chapter 4, I took a step forward, grabbed Susan's hand, and shouted in panic, Susan, we can't get married today, Susan froze, surprise flashing in her eyes, but soon, she tightened her grip on my hand and giggled, Fran, stop joking, everyone is waiting for us at the hotel, I looked at her seriously, Susan, I'll explain later, but we really can't get married today, right in front of Susan, I called my parents, I demanded the wedding be cancelled and told them to leave the hotel immediately. My parents were completely confused. They thought Susan and I had had an argument. My mother tried to soothe me. Fran, what nonsense are you talking about? We're at the final step. How can you suddenly say you won't get married? Listen to your mom. Whatever issue there is, we can talk about it after the wedding. My father chimed in. All the relatives are waiting. You two need to come to the hotel quickly. They hung up hurriedly, leaving me no chance to explain further. The murmurs around me grew louder. Their gazes felt like sharp arrows piercing into me. It was as if I was a heartless man, backing out at the last moment. Susan's face turned paler by the second. Mary, furious, also joined in. Francis, you jerk. How can you back out now? What do you expect Susan to do? Susan sat on the bed, 
crying like a weeping flower. Seeing her so upset, it tore at my heart, but when I thought of how my parents had died so tragically in my past life, I couldn't delay any longer. Susan, I'm sorry, I need to go to the hotel right now. I'll explain later. Just as I turned around, Susan gripped my hand tightly. Her grip was so strong, it felt like she might crush my hand, but her voice was filled with desperation. Francis, if you walk out that door today, it's over between us. I didn't dare look at her, only whispering, I'm sorry, Susan. I'll explain when I come back. Susan suddenly let go, her eyes filled with despair. She yanked off her veil and threw it hard at me, her face full of rage. Francis, you bastard. She shoved me aside and bolted out the door, barefoot. I hurried after her. Susan ran wildly down the street, her white wedding dress fluttering in the wind. A speeding car was heading straight for her. I didn't have time to think. My body instinctively lunged forward, using all my strength to push her away. Bang. A loud crash echoed through the air. My body flew through the air in an arc. I hit the ground hard. Pain shot through me instantly. It was as if countless knives were slicing through my body. My vision blurred. The world around me spun. Chapter 5. I died. Again. But this time. I wasn't stabbed to death. I was killed by a car. After the car hit me, it actually came back and ran over my limbs again. It felt like my body had been torn into countless pieces. In my last moment of consciousness, I saw Susan running toward me, her face filled with horror. She was calling my name, but I couldn't hear what she was saying. A faint smile tugged at the corner of my lips. At least she was safe. When I woke up again, I felt a crushing pain in my chest, as if my insides had been shattered. The pain was like thousands of ants gnawing at my body making it almost impossible to breathe. I struggled to open my eyes, and saw Susan blushing shyly on the bed. She had no idea of the terrible events that had just unfolded. Before Mary could speak, I quickly grabbed the wedding shoes from the photography bag and under the bed. I shoved my way through the crowd and rushed out the door, in one swift motion, leaving everyone dumbfounded. What? Francis is in such a hurry. How did he manage to do so much in just a minute? Hey, you haven't even handed out the red envelopes. How can you just run off with the bride like that? Their voices of confusion echoed behind me, but I didn't stop. I shoved Susan into the passenger seat of the wedding car, then floored the accelerator, speeding straight to the hotel. Susan looked at me, bewildered. Fran, what's gotten into you? Ignoring her, I sped down the road. I was racing against time with the killer. I couldn't let the tragedy repeat itself. Susan clung tightly to the seatbelt, her eyes filled with fear. Fran, please stop. You're scaring me. I kept my face stern, not answering her question. There was no time to explain. This time, I had to survive. Chapter 6 I arrived at the hotel an hour earlier than planned. As soon as the car stopped, my heart began pounding violently. It was as if it was warning me of imminent danger. I turned to Susan and instructed her. Susan, stay in the car. I'll be right back. After that, I quickly called the police. Officer, there's a killer inside the Wanching Grand Hotel. My voice trembled with anxiety. The police said they would dispatch officers immediately and told me to stay calm. I felt a slight sense of relief. Then I ran towards the entrance where my parents were greeting guests. They looked at me with surprise. Fran, how did you get here so fast? Shouldn't you be picking up the bride right now? I grabbed my parents' hands tightly and said in a firm tone, Mom, Dad, come with me now. We'll talk in the car. My mother pulled her hand away and exclaimed, What's wrong with you? How can you just leave the guests like that? I shouted, If we don't leave now, we're all going to die. Hurry up. My father also thought I had lost my mind. We were at a standstill. No matter how hard I tried to pull him, he refused to budge. Francis, we can't afford to embarrass ourselves like this. If you don't give me a reasonable explanation, I'm not leaving. I had no choice. I told them everything about what had happened in the past life. My voice shook as I recounted the horrific nightmare. After hearing the story, they looked at each other in disbelief. In their eyes, I could see the shock. Desperate, I tugged at their sleeves, pleading like a helpless child. Please. Just trust me one more time. Let's leave this place. But time was running out. Before they could react, a burst of blood suddenly bloomed across my chest. Chapter 7. Once again, I saw the killer in my parents' eyes. The brim of his black cap was pulled low, almost covering his eyes. With the mask covering his face, it was impossible to make out his features. The killer pulled the knife from my chest. My blood was still glistening on the blade, shining under the sunlight. Just as he was about to strike again, my mother, with newfound courage, grabbed the killer tightly. Angered, the killer lifted his foot and kicked her hard in the chest. She flew back and slammed into a nearby iron pole. The pole pierced through her body instantly. Blood poured from her mouth, but her eyes remained fixed on me. Filled with worry, the knife was withdrawn. My father, eyes red with rage, lunged at the killer too, but the knife plunged into his chest without mercy. 
blow after blow. Blood covered the ground. The sight burned red into my eyes. I mustered all my strength to throw myself at him and bit down on his ear. The metallic taste of blood spread in my mouth. He cried out in pain and thrust the dagger into my eye. A wave of excruciating pain shot through my brain, but I couldn't let go. He frantically stabbed me over and over again. Blood soaked through my clothes. Before I lost consciousness, I heard the sound of police sirens approaching. The killer quickly fled into a small car. In the blink of an eye, he was gone. Chapter 8 Once again, I stood in front of Susan. This time, I was much calmer. The killer clearly knew me and was likely very familiar with me. He knew about my wedding today and who my parents were. Otherwise, he wouldn't have so precisely targeted only my family. And last time, I had moved the wedding ahead of schedule. How did the killer manage to arrive so timely? I slowly turned my head towards the groomsmen. Everyone had joyous expressions, immersed in the celebratory atmosphere, except for one person. It was my buddy, Anthony. Just a moment ago, I had caught a glimpse of discontent in his eyes. Though brief, my sharp instincts picked it up. I fixed my gaze on him. Upon closer inspection, his figure was quite similar to that of the killer. Tall and slender, could it be that the killer is him? Once the thought took root in my mind, it grew like wild grass. Unstoppable. Anthony, sensing my stare, shifted uncomfortably. His eyes darted away nervously. Fran, why are you staring at me like that? I'm not the bride, you know. I asked directly. Anthony, where were you just now? Why couldn't I find you for so long? He stammered. I, I ate something bad. I've been in the bathroom the whole time. At that moment, Susan interrupted. Fran, what's going on with you today? You're acting so strange. I ignored Susan, still watching Anthony, not letting up. I tried to catch any slip on his face. You're lying. I just saw you in the dressing room. Anthony's face changed dramatically. His body trembled slightly, and beads of sweat appeared on his forehead. I moved closer, pressing him. Anthony, why are you lying? What were you doing in the dressing room? Anthony's panic was written all over his face. He tried to change the subject. Fran, today is your big day. Marriage is more important. Don't worry about where I've been. I calmly said. It's fine. There are cameras in the dressing room. We can just check. Anthony quickly tried to stop me. His voice urgent. There's no need for that. We've been brothers for so long. Don't you trust me? Seeing him like this, my suspicions only grew stronger. Determined. I headed for the security room. Susan couldn't hold back her anger any longer. Francis. What's wrong with you? Today is our wedding. And now you're causing a scene. Do you not want to get married? I reassured Susan. It'll be quick. Susan. I'll be right back. With that. I left the crowd and ran towards the security room. Anthony chased after me in a hurry. Just as I got my hands on the security footage. Anthony lunged at me. We immediately began grappling with each other. Chapter 9. Once again. I died. But this time. My death was entirely accidental. During a scuffle with Anthony. He accidentally pushed me. In that instant, I couldn't react at all. The back of my head slammed heavily against the corner of a table. The intense pain hit me instantly. My consciousness blurred, and I eventually plunged into darkness. When I opened my eyes again, this time, without a second thought, I clutched my stomach, a pained expression on my face. I kept shouting that my stomach hurt and ran out as fast as I could. Everyone present was stunned by my actions. They exchanged confused glances, not knowing what had just happened. I sprinted toward the surveillance room at the fastest speed I'd ever run in my life. At that moment, only one thought filled my mind. I had to find out the truth. I copied the surveillance footage from the dressing room. Then, holding my phone, I hid in the bathroom and locked the door tightly. I gripped my phone firmly. My heart pounded like a drum, and I couldn't stop trembling. My intuition told me, there was definitely something here. I focused intently on the footage. I didn't blink, unwilling to miss a single detail. Finally, I caught sight of Anthony. Chapter 10. Anthony sneaked into the dressing room. He looked around nervously, as if afraid of being discovered. He slowly walked towards Susan, his gaze burning as it locked onto her. Suddenly, he grabbed Susan tightly. His hold was so forceful, it seemed like he wanted to merge her into his body. Anthony's voice was filled with bitterness, trembling as he spoke. Susan, are you really going to marry him? Are you so heartless as to give up everything we had? Susan's face was filled with panic. Anthony, you're crazy. This is my wedding. Stop this. But Anthony seemed possessed. He didn't listen to a word she said. His eyes burned with a crazed intensity as he growled. Why? We were so in love. Why are you marrying him? Is it just because he has money? Susan glared at him. Anthony, wake up. We ended long ago. Today is my wedding. You can't ruin it. Anthony's emotions grew more intense. He grabbed Susan's hand, whispered in her ear, his voice full of pleading. Susan, just once more, just one more time. I promise I'll never bother you again. 
Susan turned her face away, a flicker of struggle in her eyes, but her body didn't resist anymore. Then, sounds that made my face flush with embarrassment filled the dressing room. Those ten minutes felt agonizingly long. Every second was a brutal torment for me. Finally, Anthony left, satisfied. Susan gasped for breath, her face flushed, and hurriedly fixed her disheveled hair and clothes. She quickly reapplied her makeup, trying to cover up the disgraceful scene that had just occurred. At that moment, my entire world shattered. I couldn't stop trembling. The fury inside me threatened to consume me. Susan and Anthony, these despicable cheaters. They shamelessly engaged in such behavior on my wedding day. This green hat they gave me was as vast as the Siberian steppe. How could I still go through with this wedding? I wanted to rush out and teach them both a lesson, but reason told me to stay calm. Anthony might be the killer. I couldn't provoke him carelessly. Chapter 11. Anthony's impatient voice reached me. Fran, did you fall into the toilet? The bride's side is already asking for you. His voice thundered in my ears like an explosion. I scrambled to get myself together. My mind raced. If I revealed everything now, Anthony might kill me out of jealousy. If I called the police, but lacked solid evidence, it could all end up going nowhere. What should I do? Just when I was at a loss, my hand brushed against the ring box in my pocket. My eyes lit up. I've got it. A plan instantly formed in my mind. I quickly called out. Anthony, I've got diarrhea. Could you bring me some tissues? Anthony grumbled. What's wrong with you at such a crucial time? He handed over the tissues with clear impatience. He covered his nose. His eyes filled with disgust. Taking advantage of the moment, I secretly slipped the ring into his pocket. The movement was subtle, and he didn't notice a thing. Chapter 12. I hurried back to the room. Frantically, I patted my body, beads of sweat forming on my forehead, and a look of panic crossed my face. Susan, the wedding ring is missing. Everyone in the room was suddenly in a frenzy. They quickly started helping me search everywhere. Susan's face was full of worry, her voice tinged with blame. Fran, how could you not take care of something so important? Where did you last go? I slapped my forehead, pretending to have a sudden realization. That's right. I went to the dressing room. I must have left it there. A group of people rushed over with me to look for it. We rummaged through the entire dressing room, turning everything upside down, but still couldn't find the ring. Just when everyone was at a loss, someone suddenly noticed the camera in the dressing room and exclaimed, Huh. There's a camera here. We can just check the surveillance footage. Susan and Anthony's faces instantly turned pale. They exchanged a glance, terror filling their eyes. Chapter 13. That person moved too fast. So fast that Anthony didn't even have time to stop him. Without hesitation, he led us all to the surveillance room, immediately playing the footage. Anthony frantically tried to rush forward to stop it, but I tightly grabbed hold of him. I put on a troubled expression as I looked at him. Anthony, could you check my car for me? We'll stay here and check the footage. There was a trace of urgency in my voice, as if I were genuinely worried about the missing ring. Anthony's tongue got tied in his panic. His face flushed red, his eyes filled with anxiety. He tried to persuade me to give up checking the footage. Fran, I don't think it's here. Didn't you spend a lot of time in the bathroom earlier? Maybe you dropped it there. Watching the footage is such a waste of time. If we miss the auspicious hour, it won't be good. Susan was also visibly nervous. Her gaze darted around. Her hands clenched together so tightly that her fingers turned white. Her voice trembled. That's right. Fran, mom's already urging us to start. The wedding company probably has backup rings. Let's just go. No need to waste time here. The way these two were acting. It was like they were trying to hide something. I stayed silent, just quietly watching them. Susan became more and more anxious, gripping me tightly. She kept urging me not to waste any more time. It wasn't just me. Even the people around us began to suspect something after seeing how Susan was acting. The person playing the footage looked excited, as if he was eagerly anticipating something. He quickly fast-forwarded the footage, until it reached the inappropriate scene. Everyone's attention was drawn to the sounds coming from the footage, and they couldn't help but lean in closer. When they saw the scene on the screen, they were all stunned. The entire surveillance room fell into dead silence. The only sound left was the shameful noise echoing in the air. Anthony and Susan's faces turned as white as paper, their bodies trembling slightly. They knew. It was over. They were completely exposed. Chapter 14. My wedding to Susan was cancelled. The reason was simple. Everyone understood. After all, having such a huge betrayal exposed, no one could go through with the wedding. The affair between Susan and Anthony spread like wildfire among our friends and family. They became a laughingstock. Anthony had been failing in business for years, drowning in debt, out of brotherly loyalty. I had lent him money to help him through his hardships, but how did he repay me? I filed a lawsuit to get that money back. When Anthony heard about it, he came to beg me. Fran, we've been brothers for so many years. Are you really going to take it this far? I gave him a cold smile. 
My heart full of anger and disappointment. Brothers, did you think of me as a brother when you and Susan were fooling around at my wedding? Seeing my determination, Anthony's face twisted in rage, his eyes turned vicious, and he suddenly pulled out a knife, stabbing at me in a frenzy. Fortunately, I was prepared. I dodged swiftly and then quickly overpowered him, pinning him to the ground. He struggled desperately under my weight, cursing me relentlessly. Francis, you think you're innocent, you're the third party. I froze, glaring at him in shock. What nonsense are you spouting? Anthony panted, glaring back at me with venom. Susan and I were together long before. If I had your money, she would have married me instead. I clenched my teeth and tightened my grip, holding him down. Anthony continued to shout. She never loved you. You're just a fool, being used without even knowing it. At that moment, Susan suddenly rushed over. She slapped Anthony hard across the face. Her voice was sharp and shrill. Fran, don't listen to him. I love you. I was forced into this. He blackmailed me with a video. Just as Anthony was about to speak again, Susan clawed at him furiously. The scene descended into chaos. My mind was spinning in confusion. What did Anthony mean by all this? Soon, the police arrived. They arrested Anthony for attempted assault. As I watched Anthony being led away by the police, there was no satisfaction in my heart. Only an overwhelming sadness. Chapter 15 During this time, Susan kept sending me messages. All kinds of regret. Begging to reconcile. I only responded with two words, divorce. At Susan's request, we had registered our marriage before the wedding. I initially thought it would give her some security, but now it has become a nuisance. The divorce papers have already been sent to her home. Unable to contain herself, she brought her entire family to confront me. Susan's mother looked at me with an apologetic expression. She held my hand tightly and spoke in a flattering tone. Fran, Susan has made a lot of foolish mistakes. I really didn't want to come here, but Susan is two months pregnant. The child is yours, and you have to take responsibility. Susan is pregnant. This news left me stunned for a while, my mind completely blank. After a long moment, I finally regained my senses and sneered. Congratulations, but the child's father is still in prison. Have you told him the good news yet? Susan looked at me with deep sorrow. Her eyes were swollen, clearly from crying for a long time at home. Fran, I know you're angry, but the child is yours. You were drunk that day, don't you remember anything? If you don't believe me, we can do a DNA test when the child is born. I looked at her without saying a word. She bit her lip and continued pleading. Fran, the law states that a divorce can't be granted during pregnancy. Please give me another chance. Let's start over. I'll be a good wife, a good mother, and I'll take good care of this family. Susan spoke with such conviction, as if she truly wanted to change. Even my mother seemed moved. She gently took my hand and whispered, Fran, the child is innocent. Maybe you should. Hey. So that was Susan's plan all along. Too bad she miscalculated. I spoke coldly. Susan, let me be clear with you. I had a circumcision two months ago. You know exactly whose child you're carrying. We are definitely getting divorced. Don't think you can use this pregnancy to threaten me. I'm not falling for it. For the sake of our past. I wanted a peaceful separation. If you agree to the divorce, I won't pursue the money your family borrowed. But if you refuse, we can take this to court. Your pregnancy will just be evidence of your infidelity, and I'll definitely win. By the way, your family owes me money, so return it within a few days. Otherwise, I'll sue, and you can all reunite in prison with the child's real father. Upon hearing the demand for repayment, Susan's father panicked, his face turned red, and his eyes were filled with urgency. Fran, we're family now. Why bring up borrowed money? My daughter has been with you for so long. It's only fair she gets some compensation for her youth. Right. She knows she was wrong. Can't you give her one more chance? Wow. It's true that some people really have no shame. If I kept dealing with them, I was going to lose my mind. I grabbed a broom and swept them out the door. Chapter 16. I finally reached an agreement with Susan and her family. We would get divorced, but the dowry would not be returned, and the debt would be written off. I just wanted to rid myself of this dreadful experience as quickly as possible. On the day Susan and I went to finalize the divorce, the sky was so gloomy that it felt suffocating. As I was closing the car door, that familiar figure suddenly rushed toward me. He raised a knife and aimed it directly at me. Thanks to the many times I'd been stabbed before, I was already skilled at dodging to the side. But he didn't give up, charging at me again with a terrifyingly reckless determination. In the chaos, I knocked off his hat. When I saw his face, I was stunned. It was Susan's brother, Victor. Just as I stood frozen in shock, Susan suddenly shoved me hard. I crashed into the knife, and blood immediately blossomed across my chest. I looked at Susan in disbelief, my voice trembling. Why? Susan looked down at me, her eyes filled with a mix of complex emotions. Francis, you forced me into this. If you hadn't insisted on the divorce, none of this would have happened. I truly wanted to have a good life with you, 
Victor pulled the knife out. Just as he was about to stab me again, a group of undercover police officers rushed out and swiftly subdued him. Victor struggled desperately. He looked at me in disbelief, his eyes wide with shock. How is this possible? How did you? I pulled a fake blood pack out of my jacket, one I had bought online, laughing with joy. I couldn't stop the tears from streaming down my face. If I didn't agree to the divorce, would I really survive? You never intended to let me live, did you? I could never figure out why your dear brother didn't show up on the day of the wedding. Turns out, he was waiting to ambush me at the hotel. Susan, Victor owes a lot of money, doesn't he? You thought if my family was wiped out, all the wealth would automatically go to you, right? Too bad, you miscalculated this time. Chapter 17 After Anthony accidentally killed me, I knew he wasn't the real killer. He was too panicked, trembling all over. He even shakily called for an ambulance. The killer I had seen was capable of wiping out my entire family. There was no way it could have been someone this terrified. Later, I made a deal with Anthony in prison. As long as he told me the truth, I wouldn't make him repay his debt. After much hesitation, Anthony finally nodded in agreement. I really hadn't expected it. Anthony was truly in love with Susan. Susan was his first love. They had been together since high school. But unfortunately, Anthony came from a poor family. Their relationship didn't last long and ended early. Anthony dropped out of school to work in another city in order to pay off his family's debts. Susan and I were college classmates. We gradually got to know each other. And naturally, we ended up together. We had been in a relationship for 10 years. On the day Susan accepted my marriage proposal, Anthony came back. They rekindled their old flame and started seeing each other secretly behind my back. Until our wedding day, Anthony wanted to elope with Susan, but she refused. Which led to the unsightly scene that followed. Chapter 18. Later. I hired a private investigator to look into Susan's family. I then learned that Victor had gotten involved in online gambling. Amassing a huge debt. No wonder Susan always came to me asking for money every few weeks. I gave her some at first, but later refused. Using the excuse that I was saving up to buy a house. As a result, her whole family started resenting me. To help Victor pay off his debts. They meticulously planned the murder at the wedding venue. With so many people at the wedding. The crowd provided the perfect cover. With Susan's cooperation, Victor's attempt at murder would have easily been concealed. They had planned everything carefully, considering every detail multiple times. Susan even urged me to take out a large life insurance policy. They believed that as soon as I died, as the legal spouse, Susan would naturally inherit all of my assets. Now, her entire family is in prison for attempted murder. I've finally woken up from this nightmare. 